Hello you guys and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and I'm a wedding photographer in the lovely state of North Carolina and today I wanted to talk about how I set up my Nikon Z5 and my camera settings on wedding day. So I made a somewhat recent video on my channel when I upgraded to mirrorless. I upgraded to the Nikon Z5 mirrorless camera and I actually upgraded from a DSLR but it was not a full frame. It was a crop sensor DSLR camera. So the transition to mirrorless, the quality of my photos, in my opinion, has been like truly amazing. I love this camera. I know it's not the newest Nikon mirrorless camera, which does make it a little bit more affordable. And I list all my reasons why I chose this camera in that video. So if you're interested, you can go check that out. I absolutely love this camera. I think my images are so much better. Like it's just, it's different and it's hard to explain, but it's just, I highly recommend if you're looking to upgrade, try mirrorless at least try it out like rent it uh, and see if you like it i personally just i'm in love whenever you buy a new camera you have to set it up so i wanted to kind of go over how i set my camera up like all all of the kind of focuses and and things that i do when i get a new camera like the first things i do when i get a new camera and then i also wanted to go over all of my settings that i have on wedding day what my actual camera settings are when i photograph weddings so hopefully this video will be helpful for you so the first thing that I do whenever I buy a new camera is make sure that all the images are being saved as raw files usually or in my experience they usually default to saving as JPEG but you have to have to make sure that your camera is saving all of the images you take as raw files I'm sure it's no secret that raw files are way better to edit First of all, raw images is R-A-W, is a, a type of file, kind of like JPEG or PNG or GIF or GIF, whatever you want to say. That's a file type. So raw is a file type. It's a huge file. It's a very incredibly large file, but it lets you edit more of the image. So if you ever have a JPEG image and a raw image side by side, the edits will look drastically different. Trust me, I know from experience, raw images are so much better to edit. So I always make sure the first thing I do is I make sure my camera is saving all of my images as raw images. The next thing that I do to my camera is make sure it's on manual mode. It's very easy to go on manual mode, but for this camera specifically, for the Z5, defaults to auto ISO, which I know people on my channel have commented that they love auto ISO, which I'm not hating on auto ISO. ISO, but I want to be in control of absolutely everything on my camera settings so I turn it off and make sure that it's just not automatically changing my ISO and I'll kind of explain why in a minute because I am very specific on my camera settings I don't know I just I want to be in control of all of it I also have my release settings as continuous my AF area mode is wide area AF in parentheses s so singular I like to be able to manually put where I want the focus to be, where I want the camera to focus. So if my couple, let's say it's on a wedding day, my couple, I want them kind of off to the side a little bit. I want to be able to manually use um, the controls here to move that. But obviously there are like dynamic focuses. So maybe if you're looking to do that, let's say for people walking down the aisle, that might be a good option. But for me, I like to have full control over where I want the focus area to be. My focus is set to AF autofocus C. So those are my settings in terms of like setting up my camera, but now I wanna get into the actual manual settings when shooting a wedding. So first of all, if you are not shooting in manual mode, you need to start. I do have a whole video on my channel kind of going through manual mode in very, very simple terms. It's helped me learn. I was one of those people who was really intimidated by shooting in manual. I didn't think I could ever do it. But now that I shoot in manual, I cannot imagine not being in control of every single thing about 
my image. I uh, I like to be in control of all of the like settings and stuff on my camera. So yes, for me personally, I have to shoot in manual. So I really, really recommend if you are starting to shoot weddings or just starting to get really serious about photography, learn on manual mode. I promise it will be worth it. And make sure to check out my video. I'll link it down below. So let's get into my, I guess, top three settings on wedding day. Number one is the f-stop or the the aperture. I never feel like I say that word correctly. Aperture? Aperture? I never say it correctly. Anyway, the f-stop. I keep my f-stop as low as possible or as wide open as possible. So if you don't know what f-stop is, it's basically how much will be in focus in your image. I go over every single thing. I go over f-stop, shutter speed, and ISO in my shooting in manual video that's linked down below. So I'm gonna go over like a very basic understanding in this video. If you want a bit more detail, make sure to check that video out. The f-stop kind of sets, I guess, how much is gonna be in focus of your image. That is like a super simple definition, I guess, of it. So the lower the number, the less in focus, the higher the number, the more in focus. So why do I keep it as low as possible? I want that blurry background. So when you see an image, you see that like bokeh, that nice creamy blurry background. I live and breathe that, okay? I want it in every single one of my photos. So I like to keep my f-stop as low as possible because that's how you achieve it. Depending on the lens that I'm using, it's usually at like a 1.8, maybe a 2 maybe it too. Depending on the lighting situation or how many people are in the photo, usually when I'm doing detail photos like ring shots, I'll bring it up to a two, um, but for the most part, I like to stay at a 1.8. So why I like the blurry background, I think it fits in my style a bit more, but not everybody's like that, so you have to find your own style. I know a lot of people who shoot at an f-stop of five for like their couple's photos because they want more of the background in focus, and that's fine. You have to determine what is right for you. For me, I live and breathe for a blurry background, so there you go. So on wedding day, I default to my f-stop being a 1.8 or just as low as possible, and I will only raise it if there are multiple people in the photo. So for example, during combined bridal party photos or family formals, obviously there are more people than just like the bride and groom. So I will increase my f-stop to make sure everybody is in focus in the photo. But that can be raised anywhere from like a 2.8 to maybe a four, depending on how many people are in the photos and how far back I can be. I never want to deliver you know, a family photo with like the outskirts, like the edged people, you know, the ones that aren't close to the middle, these people to be blurry because I didn't have my f-stop high enough. But the one setting that I do change probably the most frequent are my shutter speed and my ISO, but more often my shutter speed, I would say. I do not take my shutter speed lower than one over 200 or even one over 250 because it's a wedding day people are moving, things are happening, and I do not want my photos to be blurry. I don't want my subjects to be blurry, just the backgrounds. I don't wanna miss something that somebody does, like, you know, maybe somebody does something funny on the dance floor, but my shutter speed wasn't high enough to capture it. Well, that moment's gone forever. So let's say you are outside um, and you're taking like couples portraits outside and it is extremely bright. I will keep my f-stop low, which the lower the f-stop, the brighter the photo as well. Higher f-stop, darker the photo. I will keep my f-stop low and I will increase my shutter speed first. Also decrease my ISO because that's the brightness. I feel like I'm talking all out of order. I feel like you need to watch my other video first and then come back. I'll wait. I will adjust my shutter speed. I will increase my shutter speed so it is not as bright because the higher your shutter speed is the darker the photo oh. because the higher the shutter speed the darker the photo so i will adjust my shutter speed if i'm in very bright situations i will increase my shutter speed before ever touching my f-stop so let's say i increase my shutter speed to like a ridiculous amount then maybe <laughs> then maybe i might adjust just my f-stop but for the most part, I like to shoot wide open. My ISO, 
is always as low as it can be. So ISO, the higher the number, the brighter the photo, but you get more grain. So the lower the number, the less bright, darker the photo, but you don't get grain, as much grain, I should say. So I like to keep my ISO as low as possible, probably around 100, because that's as low as it can go, because I want to avoid as much grain as possible. But I will say, I used to never bring my ISO up unless like it was an emergency, like it's dark inside a church and I can't use flash, then I would increase my ISO. But I was like so against it when I was using my DSLR because it would be so grainy and I felt like it looked awful. So I will say, since upgrading to this mirrorless camera, it can handle a higher ISO a lot better than a DSLR could have. So I do feel way more comfortable raising my ISO. I've actually raised it a lot more since using a mirrorless camera. I will raise it to maybe a 400. I've raised it to 2000, even higher before. And yes, there's grain when you get to the thousands, of course, but not nearly as bad as you think. I, I don't know, I feel like the mirrorless cameras can just handle low light or like higher ISOs a little bit better than the DSLR, or at least the one that I was using, which was a crop sensor DSLR. So, I mean, this is a huge upgrade for me, but I will only increase my ISO if we're inside and I need a little extra light. I'm comfortable between like, I, I don't know, I try to say like, 400, maybe 600, depending on how much light I need. And then, you know, if I'm getting up to like 800, 1000, then I might think about, hey, I'm gonna add a flash here because I don't want it to be too, too grainy, even though it's not that bad. I think I just am so terrified of increasing my ISO an absurd amount because I don't want it to be grainy and I'm like so worried about it. Anyway, that sounds like a me problem. To recap my settings for wedding day, I keep my f-stop as low as possible, so around a 1.8, maybe a 2. I only raise it if I'm doing family formals or bridal party or I just need to capture a little bit more, like more people around. For my shutter speed, I will not take it lower than 1 over 200 or 1 over 250. I will never take it lower than that because you will just have blurry photos. It's just a fact. If it's bright outside, I will increase my shutter speed to combat that so my images aren't super blown out. And for my ISO, I like to keep it as low as possible, but I'm comfortable raising it for a mirrorless camera to maybe like 400 to 600. But then, like I said, I'm definitely going to opt for my flash if I'm raising it above that. I hope you found this video helpful. I, I really hope that this made sense. <laughs> if you found this video helpful, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye.